Board. I'm recording. Hello. Welcome to Truth. <laughs> As uh, discussed by Dan. Now, I, I've got a question. Can you own anything? Okay. And I'm going to give you the answer right now. So this is going to be a pretty short video, maybe. Um, <clears throat> the answer is no, you can't actually own anything. And somebody's saying to me, Dan, I got the title to my house or my car. I own it. I own it clear and free. I've paid for it. Uh, it's not as easy as that, you know. Uh, what we've got to do is we've got to first... If you haven't already checked out anything about natural law, you need to go look up about natural law and what natural law is, okay? That's the first thing you've got to do uh, to get some clues as to whether you can own anything, right? Once you've done that, then we'll talk. The answer is no. You cannot own anything, right? And I'll tell you why. Because did you actually make it? Now, without getting into the fact that actually we all are really God on a certain level, although we have a certain amount of separation from the whole Godhead, if you like. So we're not truly, we can't truly be, um, even though you can't divide God, this is a bit of a paradox here now, what I'm talking about, but even though you can't really divide God, um, God's indivisible. Um, and if we're created by God, then that means we're part God, you know. Um, but are we really God? Because you don't know everything that God knows. So are you really God? No, you're not. Okay. And are you experiencing being everything and nothing all at the same time? No, you're not. Okay. So... Um, where I'm going with this is, can you really own something if you didn't create it? Well, you may have created it on some level, but you can't remember it. And you certainly didn't write yourself um, some kind of IOU or deed or something saying that, yes, that's your bit of land there, or you, that little bit of iron matter that you made into a car is yours now, you know. That didn't happen, okay? Oh man, that's so wobbly. I'll put you back down on the table because that could be really annoying if you're watching this video. Um, and I'll just lean forwards on a stable surface. So, can you really own anything? After three minutes of waffle, no. You can't really own something that you... At least you don't remember making. So you you didn't make it okay for as far as much as we know right now, okay. Um, you can't really show how you would have made it anyway. So let's pretend for a minute that you didn't make it, okay. Let's pretend for a minute that you're not completely God. Let's pretend for a minute that um, you're just a man, equal with other men on the on the earth, as we know by natural law. Um, can you own something outright? And the answer is no, because you didn't make it, okay? That's as simple as it gets. You didn't make any of this. You're just here. Experience it, okay? Now, you're an equal, and you have domain over the earth. So what that means is, well, you know you... You would like to say you own your own body, but you don't really own your own body because you didn't really make your own body. You didn't really make all the molecules that are in your own body. Okay, but it has been lent to you for a certain amount of time, and that is your lifetime, okay, uh, by God. And you have possession. You have Your soul has possession of your body, so you know that you can have possession of physical matter, okay? So that must mean, then, that you can claim possession of certain pieces of physical matter and one would assume that you can do that as long as nobody else nobody else has the claim of that physical matter so nobody's going to be able to claim your body okay and in likelihood 
um, where we're at right now in human um, development, not many people actually claim, let's say, physical possession of their own land or uh, house or whatever they actually own or their own car. They don't actually go out and actually write a an affidavit or a statement saying that I, the man, claim the physical possession of my um, property, of the physical matter that's in my possession. I claim that possession, you know, because there's a difference... There's definitely a difference between owning something. Owning something, to own something, you really had to have created it, okay? Or created it and actually given a grant of that thing to somebody else. So there is actual proper ownership, if you like. Um, and all you get in the legal system is a colour of title, which means, basically... Uh, what it sounds like. It's not a proper title. <laughs> it's just a a, sh a different shade of something, okay? I don't know how to explain it, but, you know, it's like, it's not really black, but it's just a different shade of it. You know, it's just a, a shade of grey, you know? It's not really black, so to speak. It's just a shade of grey. So, um... <clears throat> What you have in the legal system is the colour of title. Now, even the person at the top of that chain of title can't actually, and I would say person, because more often than not, and, now, and I don't know about old Queenie, whether she claims to be a person or a real woman um, in her dealings, and I mean to find that out, I mean, I don't know how you'd even go about finding that out. If somebody knows, post it in the comments. But, um, I mean, I guess you could research lots of documents and see how she's referred to and whatnot like that. But even the person at the top of that chain of title doesn't actually own anything. Not until you get right up to nature or God itself. <laughs> That's when you get to the real ownership, okay? So there's only a procession of um assumed ownership and what we would call basically possession um and all you can do is claim that possession just the same way as a dog would claim possession of a certain bit of territory by cocking his leg and taking a pee on something um that's really all you can do in life okay um you can't actually really own something but can a fictitious entity, such as a government, actually own anything? And the answer is no. Okay. They can't own diddly squat in, or possess diddly squat. In fact, anything material, they have no jurisdiction over. But they don't want you to know that. Okay. Um, they would claim that they... Um, this is what they would like you to believe, that they have jurisdiction by the powers vested in them by other men and women, okay? But the problem is, those other men and women can't actually have a true ownership either, okay? So they can only claim a certain amount of possession. And for a fictitious entity to claim possession on, on a man's behalf is... Yeah, it's just falseness right there. I don't know what better word for it than falseness. In order to claim possession, you need to have possession, okay? And I can't go ahead and, um, let's say, I can't really go ahead and claim possession of something and then hand it off to somebody else and say, well, I'll give you possession of that now. I can say that. But the real claiming has to be done by the real man, you know. So even if I was to hand off and say, okay, I'm giving you this land, 
unless that man claims the possession of the land that I'm supposedly giving to him, um, there's no there's no passing on of possession. Now, I, I guess I really don't know where I'm going with this video, as as with many of my videos. But um, if we start looking at, like, let's look at a family that says, let's say there's a family that owns some land, right? And the father claims possession, okay? And then the father dies, but um, in his will, he says... Well, I'm going to give possession to my children, you know, on my death, you know, or just before my death, whatever. Um, do those children automatically have possession? If they've been living on that land with the family, then they actually do have a very strong claim to the possession already. In fact, they could have already claimed their possession of the land uh, before his death even. Um, and they do have a claim before, let's say, let's say the man dies, right? And he's got his family living there, but he's claimed possession of the land, right? And some other old person comes along and says, well, he's that old god boy's died. I'm going to claim possession of his land. Well, guess what? He's had his family living with him and, uh, they're claiming possession of it, you know? Now. Here's an even bigger question. The guys live there, but the family doesn't live with him. Okay? But the family did live there at one point in time. Like, the kids grew up and moved out, right? Now, those children have a better claim at that land than somebody that just waltzes in. Because they already established, even though it was, you know, in the, in the past... They've established a um, a certain amount of time of possession. So the whole time they was living there as kids, they had possession of that land. And that gives them, I would say, first dibs on uh, a claim of that land. Um, I, I don't... I mean, when we start getting into this sort of stuff, it starts getting down to... Um, it gets quite difficult because everybody has a, an equal right um, to the Earth's surface, if you like, or to the to, to possessing or the dominion of the Earth. Um, but how that's actually gone about and split up is very difficult. Now, most people, I, I in fact, I don't know anybody that's actually gone out and said, "Look, I'm going to go and claim my." land okay i don't know maybe it's gone out and done that actually um in that sense now this is where old queenie might be smart she goes out right she has no real right to claim more than her fair share but if nobody else is claiming it she can claim what she wants okay so if she goes out and says, well, as the queen <laughs> and the, the powers vested in me by other people of the country, you know, my subjects that want to be my subjects, I'm going to claim all this land. And does anybody ever come along and say, hang on a minute, uh, I don't fancy being your subject, you know, you're just uh, a regular woman like you know, and a regular equal to everybody else, and why the hell should you have claim to all this land in England? Now, you see, she can't, she just can't do that. She just can't claim everything. So if you went in and said, look, I have just as much right to you to claim what I want, right? If you went in and claimed, um, now the problem is you would have to have possession of that land, okay? Now, she doesn't have possession of the land, you see. So, the way she gets around that is the fact that she has lots of subjects kind of passes that right on to her, I guess. Um, I don't really know where I'm going with this this video again. I'm just talking waffle. And I probably should have had a better um, 
uh, you know idea of where I was going to go with it. But I bet you any money, if you went in and um, let's say you've bought your land outright, right? You don't you you've had possession of it for at least no, I don't know. I don't know how long it would be a good idea to have possession of your land. It doesn't really matter, I shouldn't think, as long as you're already in possession of it. And that nobody else has an interest in it. Okay. So that means um, you, are, you own it outright. Okay. Now, even though you think you own your land outright, in the legal system you don't. Because the government can come in and take the land as they see fit. E eminent domain. Um, I don't. What do they call it in America? I don't know. Um, but it's basically the government's right to buy some land um, if they need it for supposedly the the, the good of the public, right? Um, so you don't really own your land in the legal system. Now, if you were to go in though, and you were one hundred percent firm about. Um, you being a real man or woman. And in order to be to be 100% certain about this, you need to know certain things about like when you're actually created and the difference between a birthday and a creation date and the difference between the, the identities that the government give you and your own actual true identity as a, as a real man or woman. You've got to be 100% certain about this uh, before you, you would ever attempt anything like this. But you could potentially go to old Queenie, write her a little letter um, stating your, your ideas on the subject, okay? And send it, send it certified. So she, you got a receipt that she got it, okay? Now... What you want from her is you want a, um, you just basically want her to acknowledge that you have um, claim under God or natural law to the land, okay, and that nothing that the her or the government has no jurisdiction on that land, okay. As soon as you do that, I would bet you any money she would probably just be a little upset and uh, wouldn't say much, but I don't think she'd have any option but to accept your uh, claim. I really don't. I'd love to actually try it out, but I'm not in England. I'm in America, so I can't really try that one out. Um, I mean, some people think she owns all the land in America. Um, and there's a lot of debate backwards and forwards on this sort of stuff and whether the crown um, actually does still um, underlyingly own <laughs> well uh, when I say own I mean has some kind of upper title of claim to the land um, but I the interesting thing about the United States, okay, I'm getting off track here a bit, but the interesting thing about the United States is that the Crown was forced to recognize natural law, okay, in the foundation of the country. <coughs> so if you look at the only actual lawful document, okay, in definitely in the United States, okay, um, it's definitely, probably, I would say, at the present, I think it's the most important document in the Western world, um, is the Declaration of Independence. Um, it establishes, number one, it establishes that um, the Crown um, had to... Um, basically had to accept uh, that statement that was put forth in the Declaration of Independence, which was basically establishing uh, God's rule, okay, 
um, in the foundation of the country. And the found, you know, I mean, that's basically what it was doing. Okay, I can't. It's no simpler than that, really. It it basically um, recognizes in a sort of a legal format that natural law um, is the uh, the highest order, and that's where you know, um, if I was ever in any kind of Let's say, um, let's say, if I had to go to any kind of court, I would definitely be referencing um, the Declaration of Independence. Okay, and I mean, I don't know how they would even get out of it. You know, like the Crown. I, I suppose they could potentially say, "Well, we didn't really accept it," you know. Oh. We uh we just we just made it look like we accepted it. You know, we didn't accept it by the date that it had to be accepted, so it wasn't truly accepted, you know. They'd probably come up with some bullshit like that. But the fact of the matter is, um they didn't contest it, okay? And it hasn't been contested and there's been no you know it is funny what they'll get up to you know these sort of things that you 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 like the president over here which is you know is not even a, the president of the real government you know it's the president of a corporation that's put there by the real government to run things you know um uh declaring war all the time you know, and they have to have this little declaration of war all the time, you know, the war on drugs or the war on illegal immigration or whatever, because it uh, must make them feel better about themselves or something. But the fact of the matter is, a fictitious entity can't do a damn bloody thing. It can't do anything, you know. So this idea that declarating anything is, is absolute nonsense. Um, anyway, I got off track. Um... Yeah, the most important document in the, probably the history of the Western world is the Declaration of Independence because it puts into legal, into the sort of legal system, the acknowledgement of natural law, okay, being above and beyond anything else, okay, um, because they're a bit wishy-washy on whether they want to believe some of this natural law stuff, um, you know. And it's a, you know, it's just a fact that the legal system cannot violate natural law. It's not supposed to, you know. But they get around this by creating subcorporations and people agreeing contracts with them. And it's not really, you know, there's different, there's layers of, um, of a legal system basically within legal system that. You know, it doesn't, none of it really means anything. You know, it's all just fictitious. Anyway, where was I getting to? Can you actually own anything? I've just spent 23 minutes, gone off on tangent, and the answer is no. All you can do is have possession to certain things. And guess what? You've got to be a real man or a real woman to have possession of anything in this world, okay? A legal fiction cannot have possession or own anything, okay? A man or a woman can't actually own anything, but they can have a claim of possession of something, okay? That's a little bit different to actually owning something, okay? Well, unless you've got a, a deed from God himself. <laughs> but... There is no, um, there's no way a legal fiction cannot have any, so this idea that the corporation of, um, of, uh, the Un United States corporation, right, the idea that they own 10 square miles is complete BS. They can't own anything, okay, that's just another one of those things stuck out there to try and it's just another illusion. They can't own a damn thing. 
okay? They cannot own anything. Even the little Federal Reserve notes <laughs> that they print out, and they say, well, if you use those, you can't use those if you're a real man or a real woman. That's fraud if you use those, because that's all owned by the... That's all owned by... Guess what? The Federal Reserve can't own a bloody thing. It's fictitious. It can't own anything physical. That banknote, that little piece of cotton paper, they can't own it. Okay? This is the realisation that everybody has to get to. Okay? Fictitious entities <coughs> have no jurisdiction over anything material in this world. Okay? It doesn't matter if there's a man stood behind there somehow authorising this because the man, the, the, the fictitious entity cannot be alive. Even for the time that the man supposedly lends some consciousness to it to operate, it can't be alive. Because in order for the man to lend enough consciousness for the fictitious entity to be alive, guess what? The man has to be dead. <laughs> And the man doesn't die. Okay. To be alive. There must be a, um, a combination. An integration of spirit and body. When those two things separate. You're dead. Okay. So unless. We're all somehow doing the flatliner thing. <laughs> flatlining while we're. Being a bloody fictitious entity. And then we're coming back to life as the man. And then we're going back and flatlining and going back into the fictitious entity and some the fictitious entity can never be alive okay it can never have any kind of physical ownership or possession of anything in the real world it just can't they would like you to believe the men in power would like you to believe that a fictitious entity can somehow own 10 square miles or can somehow um own little pieces of paper that they call money or can somehow own um <clears throat> well anything basically it's all a complete illusion at the end of the day this is what they don't want you to know okay it's um a complete illusion with no basis in reality okay um if i had to walk into court tomorrow number one you've got to get established what kind of court you're in number two you've got to get everything on the record number three you've got to tell that judge that you see him as a man and you're dealing with another man and that you're a man and you know you're not the birthday and the um and the and the driving license you know you've got to put the ball in his court and say look god is the judge and you're a man, and if you order somebody else to put me in prison, or if you do something to harm me, you're responsible. That's your karma right there, mate. You're going to be paying the price, one way or the other. Um, if he knows about natural law, which, if it's a high-up judge, he probably does, he's probably going to... Oh, well, I might just... You know, you've seen, you've probably seen some of the videos where they get up and walk out. That's probably likely to happen. Um, because they probably either don't know what to do in that situation. But you, what you've got to do is you've got to hold these people to rights. You can't pretend and be dealing in fictitious realms. Because when you're in the fictitious realm, you're subject to fictitious rules. Uh, or whatever they want to do, basically. Because essentially they can make the rules up as they go along. Um, <clears throat> whereas in nature, the rules are set. They're already there. Everybody can witness the rules. Everybody can observe things in nature. The rules are already, if you like, written. They can't be changed. And guess what? The rules are fair. Uh, because God or nature created them. Okay? Might not seem fair sometimes, some of the things that go on in nature but um, when you uh, I guess you look at things a little bit differently when you start looking at nature so uh, you look at things in a different way and 
maybe, I mean, we've been taught to fear nature when, uh, in actual fact, uh, nature's really the threat. I mean, we everything's upside down. That's all I'm going to say. Um, anyway, that's about it for this video. Um, to recap, there's nothing to recap. You can't own anything. I'm sorry to break it to you, but you can't. But, on a happier note, if you want to be a real man or a woman, you can pes possess something. Unless you want to own something in the fictitious sense, and then that's not really owning something. Um, anyway, that's all i got to say for now, and I guess I'll do another video on something else. Uh, see you, bye, ciao.